Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. I'm sorry I missed a couple weeks, um, but I'm back now and I'm ready to go. Today what I want to talk about is, do you need to measure the crotch curve or your crotch length? And obviously we do need to take some measurements when we're doing pants fitting, like the waist, hip, and upper thigh to pick the correct sizes to work with. But I want to specifically talk about the crotch length. This measurement has been a point that I have done extensive experimenting with. I have tried to break up the crotch length into a front crotch and a back crotch length. I've tried to break it up into the straight part of the crotch and then the curved parts of the crotch. I've tried so many different things for measuring and at the end of the day, none of that really improved my fitting method. So I started thinking about it. And if you're following along with me, you know I'm experimenting with the top down center out pants fitting method. And working with that method has really cemented my opinion that you do not need to measure your crotch length. And I just want to explore some of the ways that people have measured their crotch length. And then I want to just show you why I feel like it's not really useful for pants fitting. So this is a curve bendy ruler. And along the way, someone came up with the idea that you could wrap this around your crotch and come up with the shape of your crotch and also the measurement of your crotch. So, you know, that's pretty useful because it does bend and you can measure. You can also use a tape measure to measure your crotch. So if you look at the width of these two measuring tools, they are you know, half inch or less. So what you're measuring is that one half inch strip or space from center front through your legs to center back. Here's what the problem with that is. There are other elements that come into play that determine the ultimate length of the crotch seam on your pants. For example, if you have a athletic front thigh the fabric that goes across your front leg at the upper thigh needs to be wider because the crotch wedge in the front needs to be a little bit longer to wrap around your leg and go over that athletic front thigh because if you don't lengthen it what happens is it pulls the back crotch wedge forward creating wrinkles on your back leg now this little this body shape is not accounted for when you're measuring just that half inch or a quarter inch space on your actual crotch line so what ends up happening is you make your muslin and if you use your exact crotch length make your pants then you find out you need more length in your crotch wedges Lengthening your crotch wedges actually lengthens the crotch curve because that's the straight part at the base of your curve. You need more body depth. So that's one reason why, um, you know, measuring your crotch is not super effective. Also, if you have a prominent inner thigh, you need more width in your crotch wedges. If you want to know what your crotch measurement is, it, I think it's fine to take that measurement so you can make note of it. And obviously, if you measure your crotch length on your pattern and it's shorter than you, you, you need to add to that. But the good news is, if you're working with the top-down center-out pants fitting method, none of that comes into play because you're adding a fair amount of fabric above the original waistline so you can play with adjusting the center front and center back to balance the leg and get your inseam and hem to hang straight. So that measurement really becomes even more irrelevant if you're doing top down center out. And while we have this um, curved ruler here, I also want to show you why it may be interesting to wrap it around you to see what your curve does. But again, that's not going to translate exactly to the shape of your pattern. So if you're trying to use a curved ruler to then shape the curve of your pants pattern, I just want to explain to you why that really doesn't help. Here is my 
my top down center out happy pants fitting muslin like I've been using it to fit myself and I've been trying different things and the cool thing is I can use the same muslin over and over again I can take it off I can put it back on I can re pin it to the waistband and I can try different things with it which is very very cool but what I really want to talk about right now is if you look at I'm just gonna unsew the side seam here completely I can put it back later here is the shape of the crotch curve on my pants. Now, when you lay it down flat on the table like this, this is gonna sort of mirror how the pattern pieces look. But I wanna show you here, I can change it simply by moving it around. Like I can spread it out, right? I can move it in, I can, change the shape of it by stretching and pulling the fabric so if you start out with something that's supposed to look like this when you put it into fabric the fabric is not going to hold that shape your body is going to stretch the back crotch edge especially if you're making snug pants or if the whole crotch is touching your body whatever shape your paper pattern was is not going to be what the final shape of your crotch curve is. It's going to conform to the shape of your body to some extent. Now, there are other things I want to talk about when it comes to the crotch and fitting, but I'm going to save that for another video. But what I want to just show you here is fabric is fluid, right? It it moves, it stretches, it, it conforms. And depending on the kind of fabric you're using, so if you're using a soft drapey fabric, the extent to which that crotch curve shape is going to change or sort of, I wanna say meld onto you, right? Like if you're, if you're fitting this muslin and you're pulling the front up, pulling the back up, letting the front down, all of these different variations, um, the fabric is going to change and, you know, fit onto you um, as you stretch it and move it. So that's why I feel like measuring the crotch or worrying about the exact shape of the crotch is really not super useful in pants fitting if you're giving yourself extra to play with. So even if you haven't been able to figure out top down center out completely and you know let like let's say you've been watching all the tutorials you're excited to try it and you know you prep your pattern you add to the top you add to the sides and you're just really not sure you know how to do the the fitting portion exactly don't worry about that if you add to the top of your waistline front and back and add to your sides put the muslin on and start looking at how it is hanging off of the waistband you can start to see what the fabric is doing and in the classes that I've taught one of the things that I really stress is this seems like a you know five minute process you make your muslin, you slap it on your leg, you attach it to the waistband, you wiggle it around a little bit, and presto, you have pants. It's not that, it's not that fast, okay? You need to take your time, stand in front of the mirror, and, you know, and, and mirrors, two mirrors. Make sure you have a mirror system set up where you can see the back view without twisting around. So if you've got your two mirrors set up, Stand there and look at how the fabric is hanging off of your waist and then make small changes. Maybe lift the back up a little bit and see what happens to the front. Also notice what happens to the back. Pull up your center front. See what that does. Notice if your inseam is hanging parallel to the floor. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Notice if your inseam is hanging straight and your hem is parallel to the floor and then start to smooth out that fabric along the waist. Make sure you leave a little bit of ease along the waist if you need it, and then start fitting the side seam. So if you take your time and do that, you're gonna notice the more time you spend, 
the easier that process is going to get. And I will tell you, the first time I tried to fit my pants that way, I sucked at it. I could not do it. So it takes a little bit of practice, just like anything else. So take your time and see what the fabric is doing. The other benefit that you can get from playing with the muslin from the waist is that you can create wrinkles. So for example, pull the front up too high and notice what it does to the back leg. Start to let it down and notice how the wrinkles start to smooth back out. And then do the same thing in the back. Pull the back up too high. Look at what it does to the inseam. Look at what it does to the front of the leg. Look at yourself from the side. By creating wrinkles, by, you know, you can adjust the muslin to create wrinkles and then smooth them back out. That gives you a lot of information that you can use to identify wrinkles as you're, you know, trying to actually fit your pants. So I recommend some quality time in front of your two mirror system. Play with it. Once you've got your um, muslin in, you know, hanging the way that you like, Add a few more pins and make sure it's securely attached to your waistband. Don't take the fabric off the waistband or don't take the muslin off the waistband because then you'll have to put it back on and start all over again. Remember, you're, you're adjusting the vertical length across the waist from the center out to get the inseam and hem to be parallel to the floor. So if you take your leg off your waistband, you have to start over the next time. Make sure it's carefully pinned to your waistband before you take it off. Then you can put it back on the next day and look and see what it's doing. You might want to make some fine tune adjustments. So that's part of the fun of working with top down center out. And again, if you're not 100% up to speed with this method, just prepping your pattern, like I've shown in previous videos, cutting out one leg, sewing it together, putting it on, and attaching it to your waistband is an exercise of fun, I think. You know, just play with it and stop worrying about what the actual length of your crotch is. Circling back to the original question, you know, do I need to measure my crotch? Because you've added a few inches to the top of the front waist and back waist, you not only do you not need to measure your crotch length, you don't need to worry about how much of it is really the front crotch versus the back crotch because you're going to adjust the waistline at center front and center back and that will give you your answer. So instead of, so instead of measuring, you can play with your muslin, take your time, and come up with a fit for that one leg that you like. Make sure it's securely attached to your waistline and then take it off your body by taking the waistband off. And then you can transfer those adjustments to your pattern and cut out your second leg. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little discussion about measuring the crotch length and you know how helpful it is to pants fitting. If you have any questions or comments, please post those below and I will help you. On Friday, I'm going to be continuing my adventure working with my new design, which you can see in the background. Um, I drafted that off of my basic bodice draft and I think I'm going to be playing with different fabrics or designing a sleeve or something. So we'll have to see what it is that I decide on for Friday, but I will see you live 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for FabFit Friday. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on Friday.